Oh my God. Theodore Elizabeth Quincy Bartholomew Graham, you're making a mess. Why are you on my desk? Tell your friends that you're feeling some kind of way because your mother had to go on a work trip. I know, you don't like it. What if I kiss you in front of all your friends? Right on the mouth. Right on your mouth. This is embarrassing. Why, hello there, endurance nerds. Another week, another reason to stay in bed. Am I right? You know, unfortunately, my employer refuses to pay me to watch shit TV and play with Legos all day. You believe that shit? I asked. A bullshit? A bullshit? A bullshit. So in the interest of being a somewhat productive person, I thought I'd make another video. And today I want to provide you with everything that you need to know about HRV. What it is, why it matters, and whether you should track it. Now, HRV can be really confusing, but we're going to fix all that today. It really does seem like HRV has become the new must-track metric in endurance sports, biohacking, and it's every fitness influencer's favorite talking point. And some people are going to act like it's a magic number that determines whether or not you're going to win your next race or whether you're going to die in your sleep. Others say it's just another overhyped stat that makes wearables seem fancier than they actually are. So what does HRV actually tell us? Does it make you a better athlete? Should you be tracking it at all? And most importantly, how long before someone starts selling HRV-enhancing supplements? I don't think I actually want to know the answer to that. But moving along, let's get right into it. What is HRV and why should you care? Most people think that a healthy heart beats at a very steady, predictable pace, like a metronome. Wrong. Your heart is not a robot. A healthy heart does not beat in perfect sync. HRV is going to refer to the variation between each heartbeat, which is completely natural. So if your heart rate is 60 beats per minute, that doesn't actually mean that it beats once every 1.000 seconds. Some beats might be 0.9 seconds apart, others 1.1 seconds. That tiny difference, that's your HRV. You'll see this is a value measured in milliseconds on your wearable or in your application, but we're gonna talk a little bit more about the specific measurement later on in the video. More generally, HRV is controlled by our autonomic nervous system, which has two major branches, sympathetic, which is our fight or flight mechanism, and that's generally going to speed up our heart rate and or reduce our HRV that's going to prepare us for action or response to stress. And then there's the parasympathetic or the rest and digest, and that generally slows down our heart rate and or increases our HRV, which is more go with the flow. Measuring these responses can act as basically a real-time indicator of how well our bodies are balancing stress and recovery. But what does that really mean? A high HRV means your body is adaptable and responsive. A low HRV means that your body is locked into a rigid pattern. And I think most of you have probably been introduced to these very broad strokes, but why does this actually happen? I like to think about it like your blood being delivered in two ways, push mode or pull mode. When your HRV is low, your nervous system is in sympathetic mode, meaning that your heart is supplying blood forcefully and consistently to meet the immediate demand, whether it's physical or mental. Your heart will beat with near perfect rhythm because the priority is dependability, not flexibility. The nervous system sends a signal to the heart that under stress, the rest of the body might not reliably send those real-time signals when blood is needed and to make sure that a reliable flow is available. It's pushing the supply of blood in anticipation of the body's need. Think of this like ordering subscription, like a food or beverage item, where the same quantity is going to arrive on the same day every single week, regardless of how much you have in the fridge. When your HRV is high, your nervous system is in parasympathetic mode, meaning that your heart adapts to the body's needs in real time. This allows more flexible blood delivery and a healthy fluctuation in heartbeats. While realistically, the body still needs blood to be pumped at roughly the same rate, the heart can now rely more on those immediate signals from the rest of the body to fire when needed. The body is pulling the supply of blood from the heart when it actually needs it. Think of this like the same subscription service, but now it knows how much product you have on hand. Instead of delivering on that same day every single week, deliveries might arrive a day earlier or a day late based on that inventory signal. That ensures that you are receiving the right quantity at the right time. Now, perhaps another analogy can be helpful here. You can think of high HRV like a smart thermostat. It constantly fine tunes that HVAC system based on the environment, making small but efficient adjustments to forced air temperature and flow rates to ensure the temperature in the area is maintained in that kind of tight parameter that you've set. A low HRV is kind of like that cheap space heater. It makes those extreme rigid responses instead of those subtle adjustments. The temperature and the intensity of the air exiting the heater is fixed based on the settings on the unit itself. And it's gonna rely on those not so nuanced signals, like somebody just adjusting a dial to adjust that output. In a nutshell, the body does more fine tuning when your HRV is higher and the heart is more adaptable in real time. And this explains why HRV is typically very low during exercise. When you're training, your body prioritizes dependable output over flexibility. It doesn't want random variability in your heart rate. It wants a steady, forceful rhythm to keep the blood flowing and the body moving. But when you're at rest, you want a higher HRV. Your body should be shifting between these states pretty fluidly and not locked into high stress mode all the time. So how should endurance athletes use HRV? Let's talk about the good uses first. The first use, tracking recovery. 
If your HRV is unusually low for a couple of days, for example, it could be a sign that you're overtrained or not fully recovered. This is when you take a look at those other elements in your life, like sleep, nutrition, training load, stress, so on, and that will help you to determine if an adjustment to one of those parameters is warranted. Next is spotting illness or fatigue. A sudden HRV drop could signal that your body is fighting off something even before the symptoms hit. This certainly isn't a crystal ball, and HRV can drop for a number of different reasons, including that double espresso and bag of gummy bears that you ate for breakfast, but you might find that in conjunction with other metrics like respiratory rate or context clues, that could serve as a leading indicator to a forthcoming symptomatic illness. And of course, there's the ever-popular training adaptation. Over time, if your HRV trends upwards, that's generally a good sign that your aerobic fitness and recovery capacity are improving. It could help you to introduce some additional progressive overload as the body is primed to handle it, or on the reverse side, it may indicate that you're overcooking it a little bit. Now, here are the ways that people screw this up. One, freaking out over daily fluctuation. HRV naturally fluctuates. A single bad night of sleep, alcohol, stress, or even a heavy meal can tank it. One bad reading does not mean that you're doomed. There's a reason why every wearable trends this data and blends it with other recovery metrics to provide a more holistic picture. Next is comparing HRV between people. HRV is highly individual. Comparing your number to someone else's is like comparing heart rate or VO2 max without considering genetics, training history, or lifestyle. You'll find plenty of elite athletes out there with HRV values that are staggeringly average and folks who spend most of their time riding the couch with three-figure HRV readings. There are some very generalized healthy ranges by age and gender, but the general consensus is that it can be a bit of a black box. HRV is not like speed or power. You won't be able to make any reliable conclusions by comparing HRV between people. And then my personal favorite, skipping workouts based on HRV alone. Some athletes wake up, see a low HRV, and cancel their entire training plan. That's absolutely absurd. HRV is one data point not a decision maker. Too many people frame their days around one metric because some dipshit online told them it was the panacea of human performance, and they do so to their own detriment. If you get a good night's sleep, feel good, you're motivated, why on earth would you scrap a workout because your HRV is low? Continue to make those decisions throughout a season or a year, and the progression you will have left on the table from skipped workouts would blow your mind. Never look at HRV in a vacuum. Use the constellation of metrics and more importantly, how your body is feeling and performing to inform your training decisions. But assuming now that your interest is peaked in measuring HRV, let's get into the nerd stuff. How is HRV measured and are those wearables accurate? Now I mentioned earlier that HRV is measured in milliseconds, but this is far from a simple measurement and cannot be performed without the more precise instrumentation that we find in wearables, heart rate straps, or clinical equipment. I think all of you have seen the quintessential image of a heart rate pattern. Each heart rate is broken into phases that produce a distinct shape on the graph known as a wave. These are broken down into P, Q, R, S, and T. When we are measuring heart rate or HRV, we are primarily concerned with the R wave, the highest and most prominent peak on the graph. That's the part of the heartbeat that you can feel and is usually the most reliable to measure. Often when we very crudely measure heart rate, we are seeking a more or less simple count of those R waves over the time interval to express as a number of beats per minute but a more precise means of measuring heart rate is using the precise time interval between those R waves, and that's called an RR interval, which can then be extrapolated to a beats per minute value. For example, if that RR interval is roughly one second, your heart rate would read as 60 beats per minute. But we wanna figure out the variability between those RR intervals to calculate our HRV. And this measurement is not as instantaneous. We need a significant sample of heartbeats for which we measure those RR intervals. Usually a couple of minutes of readings are sufficient to supply that HRV value. Then our devices use a statistical calculation, usually RMSSD or root mean square of successive differences. It probably sounds like a ton of gobbledygook, but RMSSD in overly simplified terms is seeking out the standard deviation or average variation in those successive heartbeats. Using the root mean square function is not intended to create some overly complex or proprietary measurement, but rather to deal with the negative values that are created when successive heartbeat has a shorter RR interval than the one prior. HRV will always be a positive number, and essentially we just want to use the absolute value of the difference between each heartbeat and get an average of those differences. It's not really important for you to know or to understand the precise calculation, but rather to understand that at a very fractional level, your heart rate, measured by that RR interval, is actually changing from beat to beat, and HRV is a means of expressing the magnitude of that variation. Now, in terms of getting that measurement, the gold standard for HRV is an electrocardiogram, or ECG, which directly measures the electrical activity of your heart. But this generally requires an extra step and a purposeful HRV test, as most of us aren't just wearing an ECG or heart rate strap all day. Cue the ubiquity of those wearables using photoplethysmography or PPG, basically shining a light into your skin and tracking blood flow to proxy for the more discrete electrical measurements of heart rate through ECG. But how accurate are these measurements? Chest strap heart rate monitors are in fact measuring through ECG, and most of them are pretty darn accurate. 
but they are still a single lead device, so they lack the precision you will find in a clinical setting with multiple leads. The loss of fidelity, while notable, is not really a practical concern when we're looking to measure that very prominent RR interval. Chest straps do a great job of measuring heart rate and are a reliable way of getting pretty darn accurate HRV. PPG devices like Whoop, Aura, Garmin, Apple, etc. They do a decent job, but they certainly aren't perfect. Again, PPG is more of a proxy rather than a true heart rate reading. That said, if not perfectly accurate, these devices do tend to be pretty precise, meaning that if the devices are, let's say, off by 5%, they're always 5% off. And because the raw HRV in milliseconds is not the critical piece of information, but rather the trend and deviation from the mean, these devices can do a pretty decent job of HRV tracking and trending, providing those broad insights into how your body is responding. It's kind of like a power meter. We want them to be as accurate as possible, but the bottom line is not the raw watts themselves, but whether they are going up or down and how they are correlating to our training zones. A few misplaced watts aren't going to be an issue as long as the power meter is precise. Unless, of course, you're racing on a lift, but that's another conversation altogether. Now, the big caveat here is wrist-based measurements. They can be inconsistent, especially if you move around a lot or measure at different times of the day. Often those wrist-based wearables need to be worn in a position that's not always the most common or comfortable to ensure that the PPG sensors can sit flush on your skin, especially around those wrist bones and those hinge points. So just be mindful of that potential vulnerability when you're using those types of devices. But regardless of the device, the best way to use HRV is to measure it consistently ideally first thing in the morning under the same conditions. Many wearables these days try to take the friction and guesswork out of it through that continuous monitoring and automating that read. But that does leave the potential for a bad reading every now and again for the reasons that we already discussed. If you have an interest to do so, you would probably get the most effective and accurate measurement using a chest strap each and every morning shortly after waking and use the manual HRV measurement function on your fitness watch or your app and you just follow the instructions and log your daily reading. In my own personal experience, especially in recent years as wearables have really improved, I haven't found a meaningful difference in what my Garmin or Whoop provides compared to a manual test with my heart rate strap. So I'm pretty content to just set it, forget it, letting my wearables do their thing, but mileage may vary. So what's the bottom line? Should you track HRV? The answer is going to be yes if you want another metric to fine tune your training and your recovery. Maybe you're a data nerd like I am and like to track those trends over time. And most importantly, you can look at the number objectively without overreacting to those normal fluctuations. The answer is absolutely not. If you're prone to obsessing over metrics, you'll use HRV as an excuse to skip workouts that you don't feel like doing, or you really just don't care about it and would rather just train based on feel. HRV is a tool and not a rule. It's helpful if used correctly, but can be misleading if you don't understand how it works. And I'm hoping this video provided the detail necessary to make an informed choice. HRV is a super cool metric, but don't worship it. It can be one of the most useful metrics for understanding your recovery, stress, and overall health, but it's not magic. It does not replace listening to your body, and it doesn't mean anything in isolation. Use it as a part of the bigger picture, alongside how you feel, how you're performing, and what your training data shows. If your HRV is consistently improving over time, great. If it fluctuates day to day, welcome to being a human being. But do me a favor, if you found this video interesting or valuable, meander on down to all those there engagement buttons, thumbs, bell thingy, subscribe, all the youtube -y stuff. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to go check my HRV and decide if I should go take a nap or go for a run. Spoiler, the answer is always a nap. And I'll catch you in the next one. See ya.